we're going to take a look at how to do problems involving the diagram that you see in front of you, which you can use to calculate the energy that's released when moving between energy levels for the hydrogen atom. So let's say you see a problem and it says to calculate the energy released when moving from n equals 4 down to n equals 2. And remember that that n just stands for the energy level or the electron shell. So it really wants to know the energy released when you go from the fourth energy level down to the second energy level, which as we know when we go down in energy levels we release energy. So you can use this diagram which is on the back of your reference sheet to do to answer this question. So all I'm doing is to find the energy released or the change in energy. Um, I take the energy from where I start and subtract the energy where I end. So I'm starting at n equals 4, so I find n equals 4, and I find the energy that's related there, and I just plug that right in. So I write that number, negative 1.363 times 10 to the negative 19 and the unit of joules because energy has a unit of joules, okay? And from that, I subtract where I end. I'm just going to put that in parentheses so you can see, okay? And where I end, which is n equals 2. So I go to n equals 2, and here's the energy associated with that, and I write that whole number. And I'm just enclosing it in parentheses to remind myself that there is a negative sign there that I want to account for. And that has the same unit of joules because we want to be in the same unit when we add or subtract numbers. So if I type in my calculator this and I can get my answer, okay, just be careful that you do keep a minus and a negative sign here. Um, it's kind of a double negative, which ends up canceling out to be positive there. Um, but that's very important. So if I, in my calculator, I do this, I get 4.08 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Okay, and then a note again about your calculator is that rather than typing in um, exponents, I find it very helpful to, like in my calculator, I'd be typing in negative 1.363e, negative 19, um, and to get that e, all I do is on my TI-83 or TI-84 plus or whatever you might have there is you press the second button and the comma button and that allows you to get that E, that exponent. And that really means 1.363 times 10 to the negative 19. And this allows me to not have to worry about putting in parentheses when I'm dividing. Um, it gives me the correct order of operations no matter what. So I really like that E button. So that E stands for times 10 to the so it replaces the times 10 to the, so you just put your coefficient, e, and then your exponent, including the negative sign if there is one. So this gives me um, the energy that is released when moving from n equals 4 down to n equals 2. Now there's a negative sign there. Don't worry about that negative sign. It just indicates direction. So it means that energy was released in this process. Um, and so for any time you're going from higher to lower energy levels, uh, energy is going to end up being released. So you're going to get a negative answer, and that's totally fine. Now, subsequent questions might ask you to, now that you know the energy, what is the frequency of the wave that would be released here? And now that you have energy, all you have to do is go to your reference sheet and see the equations that you have to change energy into frequency, and then you can change frequency into wavelength. So if I go to my formula sheet, okay, you'll see that there's this equation here. Okay, I have energy that I just calculated in joules. Okay, I can always have Planck's constant. Here it is on my formula sheet. It's always there, so I have Planck's constant. Now I can calculate um, this Greek letter nu, which looks like a V. I can calculate the frequency. So if I recopy that equation and I can plug in the energy that I had before um, for E, and plug in my H Planck's constant and solve for frequency um, right into the equation. I like to rearrange the equation to solve for um, the thing that I know I want to solve for. So I know that I want to solve for frequency if I'm asked, let's say, for frequency. Um, and to, do, to solve for frequency to isolate that variable, I could divide both sides by H. And so my new equation would look like this. Frequency is the energy over Planck's constant. And now I can plug in the variables that I had from before. Okay, if I look back here, here's my energy. So I'm going to plug that in for E. 
And I'm just going to ignore that negative sign in front because, as I said, it just indicated direction that energy was released rather than absorbed. It's really not going to make a difference when I'm calculating the frequency. Um, if you end up getting a negative number for frequency, just ignore the negative sign because that just means you carried it in when you didn't have to. And then I can plug in Planck's constant. I had found on my formula sheet, again showing you here, I'm just plugging in that number with the units, which are joule seconds. And what you'll notice is that your joules will cancel out and my unit will end up being one over seconds, which is a unit of frequency, one over seconds or seconds to the minus one or hertz. So in my calculator, and again, as a reminder, use that exponent function. So in my calculator, I'm doing 4.08 E negative 19 um, and divided by Planck's constant. Try it in your calculator. Try it along as I go. You should end up getting 6.16 times 10 to the 14th, 1 over seconds, or seconds minus 1, or hertz. Those are all equivalent units. Now they might ask you for wavelength. And again, you can go to your formula sheet, and you can see the equation to relate wavelength to frequency. I always have C. So notice the two constants I always have are Planck's constant and C. So I have C, I have frequency, I can solve for wavelength. I just plug right in. So plugging into the equation, and I like to rearrange to solve for the thing, the variable that I'm missing. So I'm missing wavelength to isolate wavelength. I can divide both sides by the frequency. So I'm really plugging into the fact that the wavelength is the speed of light divided by the frequency. Or 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second over the frequency that I solved for before. And you'll notice that the 1 over seconds ends up canceling out, and my unit ends up being meters. Do this in your calculator. Give it a try to make sure that you can do this appropriately so that you don't have to worry about um, dividing things with exponents. I definitely recommend using your um, E button. And you get 4.186 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Now they might ask you, well, what color does this correspond to? And if, formula sh if I go to my formula sheet, I'll see that my colors um, are in nanometers. So you always want to convert your wavelength to nanometers in order to tell what color it is. And you have the conversion factor right here to convert between meters and nanometers. So it's always important to be aware of your units. So I'm just going to make space. I can take this same meters that I just got, and with dimensional analysis, I can put my meters on the bottom so it cancels out, nanometers on top, and I can copy in the conversion factor that I had on the opposite page, that there's 1 times 10 to the 9th nanometers for every 1 meter. Meters cancel out, and in my calculator, if I do that math, I will find out that I get 486 nanometers. And if I go back to my formula sheet, okay, if I look up where about 486 is, okay, it's somewhere around here, which you might say is blue or green, depending on what, um, what your eyes see. So I'd say blue or green or bluish green or greenish blue or something like that. So this is showing you how you can use that diagram to first find energy by taking where you start minus where you end. If you look over here, where you start minus where you end to find energy. And then just doing those same wave calculations you've done before, which you can look at my previous video in more depth of how to do those.